We are live. We are. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello today, tomorrow, yesterday. We are Jeff and Jaron Thompson of Woodland Park, Colorado. It's That's true. where we live. Yes. It is. yes. It's a beautiful time right here in Southern Colorado. Beautiful. Uh, the trees are turning. Seemed like almost overnight. Yep. And this is actually the weather is perfect. Yeah. Thought maybe we were going to get a little snow last night and this morning, but. I think Pikes Peak did, but he yeah. didn't. We haven't. Uh, not that it wasn't cold enough, it was just not wet enough. Yeah. So we're waiting on a few more people to get in. Do we have any business we need to talk about? Nope. Just we've, go ahead. Okay. Now we've been pretty hooked up with conference season uh, where we work, and so we're trying to do as much as we can with the time allotted us. Amen. For everybody who responded to our post about going down to Canyon City to the bridge, thank you. It was, was a, fun. It was an amazing time. It was fun. Haven't been down there in years, and well, so we and, decided to take the day. And it's always fun to watch how when you go do something fun that you think is so unrelated to anything God is telling you, but how God still speaks to you and confirms what's going on. And mm -hmm. um, one of the big deals with the Royal Gorge Bridge was in 2013. Mm -hmm. that it majority, I mean, the part burned. And so they were just talking about how sometimes you have to be tried by fire and um, water and then a rejuvenation, yeah. a restoration season, and how you can come back stronger than ever. And I was just like, God, you are so good. You are always talking to us and you are always speaking to us. Right. And so it was just neat. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get a hit on that a little bit next week. Time, time allowing. Title of today is Set Apart, Not Put Away. Uh, we have three pretty long scripture references here, and, we'll, and that'll tie into everything. First is Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. This is from the New Living. Lord gave me a message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some, of you, some, you, some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Okay, that right there is a series in itself. Uh, next is Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 and 2. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples, from, the, from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He named my name. Mm -hmm. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And then finally, Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. I love the way Paul says this. And this is from the New International. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. And that right there, the Lord has set apart so many of us. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, not that those the set apart ones are are some sort of elite special group or anything, but because we all have that opportunity, we can all we can all prophesy, we can all preach, teach, and and do all those things. <clears throat> but but those who have said yes to being set apart, and are you willing? Well, I don't know, Lord, if I'm willing. Are you willing to be made willing? Yes, sir, I am. And so. This, this time we're living in right now, this is probably the most exciting time in history, I, at least our point of view. And, and that's with, with so much turmoil going on in the world. And, you know, who, especially here in the United States with the elections, because if it affects the states, it affects the world and vice versa. Everybody is, is, is watching. The entire planet is watching. So... In the midst of all this turmoil and chaos, there is there is that peace in the storm. You and I are just like, bring it on, let's have, let's have it. And so 
there's change, there's transitions and changeovers and promotions going on in the kingdom and in the world. And these shifts are happening in, in the earthly and spiritual realms. But what, and what many believe for the future is now happening. Uh, I mean, you really have to pay attention. Uh, those of you who are real big into eschatology, pay attention because it's happening in front of your eyes and you may or may not see it. Uh, but those of us who stood patiently in the pain and struggle in our faith, uh, we're starting to move into our time of providence and destination. Hallelujah. It's been a long wait. <laughs> and, and, and again, being alive in this time, it, it's wonderful. And, uh, and just hallelujah for being called one of God's own. Uh, and this word is for the diligent and the faithful and for those who have been relentless and tenacious in their belief and trust in God's word to them. And this is what the Lord's been revealing to us. Uh, you've been set apart, and being set apart means being invisible at times. Uh, but it is for God's purpose. Amen. You may feel alone because you are alone. Uh, but it's for, again, it's for his greater purpose. Even within our groups, our teams, and, and, and our jobs, yeah, many times you're overlooked. But your stability and your reliability uh, is called upon. I mean... You may not feel like you're making a difference, but you are. You're a pillar. I mean, you're like the roof over a mm -hmm. building. The covering that God's placed upon you is covering all those around you. Uh, the thank yous, they may or may not even come, or at least maybe not enough, uh, but you're remaining gracious and you're remaining grateful that God's hands are on you and he's fulfilling his plans for you, which also means his hands are on those that are concerning you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Again, it's not all about me. Amen to that. <laughs> and just because you are alone doesn't mean you're the only one. That's I right. think that that's a misconception sometimes is you can feel so alone. You let that lie creep in. And now it's, you know, God, I'm the only one doing this. That is not truth. There's a whole kingdom that from their corner of the kingdom and from their networking of the kingdom that is has surrendered their lives wholeheartedly to God mm -hmm. and is connecting in obedience, speaking in obedience, doing what God's called them to do in obedience and don't fall into the trap of, well, God, I'm the only one doing this. No, that's, no, not. that's pride. And <laughs> that is, a, that is a very, I cautious you to be in that place because that is a very um, scary place to be in because mm -hmm. you can, the, the lies of the enemy creep in. Yeah, and you dragging people with you when you say things like that yeah. if you have a following. And so any pastor says, I'm the only one. <laughs> no, you ain't. No, you're not. Scooter, and, you're not the only one. But even any child of God that says that, I just want to encourage you right now, you are not the only one. You may be the only one in your network or in your corner, but you are not the only one. So take heart and be encouraged in that. Yeah. And so just a reminder, God sees you and he sees your heart and he, he sees your tears. He sees all the effort, the, the giving everything you got. And he hears your heart's cry to him. He knows the anguish and, and the pain that you're feeling. In the midst of all this, he's honoring your patience and your endurance. You're wanting to run. You're wanting to fly. You're wanting to excel. You're wanting to fulfill that thing that God has placed upon you to do. And, and I'll say it. You want to be noticed. We all want to be noticed. We all want to be told, man, good job. Way to go. You're doing great. And, and above all, we want to win. Because winning, there is no other place like it. Uh, and that time is, is right here. It's right here in front of our faces. Uh, just remember, you haven't been forgotten by destiny and purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, within all the adversity that we're seeing, hearing, that we feel off others, uh, those, that, those who are seers, of uh, which, yes, I are one, uh, you feel it. You feel the crowds. You feel the crowds before you ever get in there. And you you have to go into intercessor, intercessory mode. I mean, hardcore intercessory mode because you feel it. You feel fear and you feel all those things. Uh, you're shielded from it in reality because the Lord had told me a few weeks ago and I was like, man, this is, I'm, this is, this hurts and, it, and it's hard. And he just said, it's illusion. Let that sink in a minute. He said, it's illusion. That's not a part of you. Pray for those and intercede for those, but what you're feeling is an illusion to you. It's not real. 
And so I, I, I'm still unpacking that one. Uh, but all of you, you're not meant to be neutral, common. Uh, you're lifting others from those places of mediocrity, and it seems like they're being promoted ahead of you. And they are in a mm -hmm. lot of ways. But that's not your area of promotion. And that's another reminder. Uh, man, they, they, they got the promotion I didn't. You got greater things ahead of you. You have another place that's awaiting you. Uh, you're not forgotten. You're not put away. You're not set aside. You are, you are right now currently being protected because you have been protected from all those current worldly things going on, the things that have happened behind us. Because you're being prepared for the outpourings of today and tomorrow to receive all that you have seated your life for. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the word of the Lord that the Lord has spoke um, over the last few days. And it's taken a while just to, just to listen to him on it. Hallelujah, we took three days off of, <laughs> from the outside. <laughs> but the Lord says, you, you were set apart for a set time. Forged in the fires of loneliness, obscurity, and discipline to the point of hiddenness. Your time has arrived to be reintroduced to destiny and purpose. Step forward, accept my calling, accept your position, and prosper in the kingdom of God. Receive from the king of glory what you have asked for, prayed for, and interceded for. Live life abundant from the places I have set aside and reserved for you since the beginning. Let they who will say yes to me arise and come forth from the shadows of hiddenness. Let the harvest take place as the obedient are revealed by my light. Receive from me those of my heart and do all the works I have placed in your hearts to do. You are and will be set apart. And now the loneliness is gone as the wilderness is behind us. Amen. Uh, that was pretty strong. And, and listening to the Lord speak this to us over the last few days has been has been pretty significant and it, this isn't a pump up you know you're on the edge and, and even though a lot of us are <clears throat> excuse me but define the edge <laughs> well you're on you're, you're on the edge of receiving everything you've ever you've ever asked for from the lord which they make it sound like you're about to be avalanched by it but i'd like to see that happen at times and our our blessing at the end will will say that but just know that the days the days of being so set apart and and hidden from everybody around you i mean being hidden in plain sight mm -hmm. are coming to a close and excuse me very soon many of us are going to be at that forefront of sorts uh if you're, if you're expecting somebody to share a platform with you, don't hold your breath because normally it's not going to happen. But the places God is placing you, placing us, are those places where you're needed because there's, mm -hmm. there's a group of people who are waiting for you, they're expecting your arrival, and they're expecting you to bring the answers that they need in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's very, and that's, that's a blessed place to be. That is a powerful place to be because you are the one that has come forth from the shadows and the Lord is saying, this is mine. Pay attention to them. You have anything. I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who haven't given up. Thank you to all of you who have stayed the course. Um, because you just do what you do, you don't always get the acknowledgement or the... Um, kudos, whatever kudos. you want to call it, that that you feel like you deserve. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for the kingdom of God that is not the same because you have told God yes and have given him your yes. And so in that, um, I just want to encourage you, keep giving God your yes, no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the pat on the head. You don't have to have the encouragement. You don't have to have, you know, if you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, there's nobody there to go, great job. You, you know, this is what you did today. But yet at the same time, God sees it. And in the Who's kingdom, a good girl? and in the kingdom, <laughs> it makes a difference. It does. And it's just like with the one in the store or the somebody who God's told you to reach out to that nobody will ever know that you made a difference in their life, but they mm -hmm. do. And God does. And mm -hmm. so to that, I just want to encourage you keep giving God your yes. Yeah. 
We like to joke about it, and hey, I still hold it true. I want my crown to be so big that the angels have a hard time moving it to the Lord's feet. <laughs> and a lot of us, that's what it's going to be like. Uh, we have our crowns of, of reward when we stand before him. And then, as the word says, they'll, you know, we'll throw our crowns at his feet. We'll enjoy that one, guys. <laughs> Anything else, love? No, I All don't right. know how to follow that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we we have to get to church ourselves. And so we never like to leave without blessing everybody. So according to Numbers chapter 6, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And because his name is upon us, we are blessed. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And this is one that we're speaking <clears throat> over ourselves every day now. And many are familiar with it, but it's just a good reminder. We want to speak it over you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Moses' swan song, if you will. But it still holds true today because Jesus made our way to receive this. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commandments <clears throat> that I command you today. The Lord will God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise, rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If you will keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the people... All the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to, after, to go after other gods to serve them. That right there is our promise. Amen. Remember, and Moses said, if you do these things, not only will the blessings, blessings come upon you, they will overtake you. Amen. And that right there, I'm, I'm still standing here going, Lord, let's, let's see it happen. Amen. And, and it is happening, and it is going to happen even more so. So, family, we love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. May the Lord multiply your time back to you exceedingly, exponentially. We love you. Many blessings, and may every day be your best day.